Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about Magic the Gathering as a cheap, quotation mark, hobby. And compared to other hobbies that I have and my friends have, this is a relatively cheap hobby. And I will talk about FNM. Most FNMs are standard. Standard is the most promoted format and I feel like the most widely played format. So if you had to find a Magic player for a standard game, it would be as easy as probably finding someone for EDH or casual, but as a more competitive format, it's going to be easier to find someone with a standard deck than with a modern or legacy or a vintage deck. So most cards in standard are now extremely affordable. And the main reason Wizard of Coast has done something unique. They have pushed the price of cards down via masterpieces. Masterpieces Every box has a expected value, and since the masterpieces are part of that expected value, they push the value of the other cards in that set lower than they naturally would be. And this has created a scenario where decks are $150, $250. We are not in Carnage of Tarkir where decks are $700, $800, given the fact they all need to play 8 to 12 different fetch lands, each at around $20 a piece, and that's just your land base. And you also have Jace, Vin's Prodigy, the $100 Jace. We're not going to see that again. As you can see, Gideon Ally of Zendikar, arguably the best Planeswalker in Standard, is $18. The Ceaseless Hunger is about $18 as well, $16. Kalidus is $18. Nyssa is not even 10, and she's probably the second most played Planeswalker at this time. When we are going to Amarket, the trend will continue. The trend will continue as long as there are masterpieces in the set. If the expected value of a box ever gets too high, including if, it, if the labor to sell the single, the shipping and the cost is higher for a box, then opened than is unopened there wouldn't be no unopened boxes left right because there's money to be made by opening packs therefore that can never happen so the expected value of the non-masterpieces cards in the set are lowered by the masterpieces now what other hobbies am i talking about which make magic seem kind of inexpensive First off, golf, fishing, hunting, and any sport-related hobby, there is the initial investment of equipment. And equipment is very expensive. So your deck, your standard deck, is very similar to the capital investment that you need to make on new equipment. Now you might ask, okay, rotation, rotation. Well, sometimes you buy new equipment for golf, sometimes you buy new equipment for fishing sometimes you buy new equipment for whatever and in a scenario of dave and busters or an anime convention or a monthly subscription of some type uh, to a box that is a recurring cost so the same with magic magic has a recurring cost and that is called rotation or that's called when you want to make a new deck in shadows over innistrad you have nahiri Relentless Dead is relatively new. That card has just got up over $10. And Archangel Averson, I saw her on eBay for $8 the other day. So these are TCG mids. I'm not sure how it is exactly calculated, but they do seem a tiny bit high compared to eBay prices. So when you have Magic the Gathering and you have decks, you can play FNM. So capital cost aside, so I'm assuming you already have a deck in standard. You can go to any game store on a Friday night, pretty much, that carries magic, and that game store will allow you to play, assuming it's standard, six hours from 6 p.m. to midnight for $5. That is less than a dollar an hour for entertainment. I don't know what other types of entertainment gets that value. Again, I talked about capital investment and how many other hobbies need capital investment. Golf is more expensive. Uh, if you want to see a sports game, that's way more expensive. If you want to go hunting, 
my dear friend, she actually went to Africa to hunt some animals. And what she didn't realize was, uh, I think it was Kenya, they hold your animals for eight months. But they st- so if you hunted an antelope or something, they would hold the antelope for eight to nine months of before they can ship it to America. That storage fee is more than most magic decks in modern to hold an animal, that storage fee during that time period. So when you talk about expensive hobbies, Magic the Gathering is not one of them. It used to be way more expensive, but then they did the masterpieces, which was smart. I didn't expect it to work, but it has. And it's worked purely for economic reasons from the expected value of a box. Eldric Moon, you got Lily and your Grim Flayer. And those are the two, only two over $10. Everything else you can get for under $10. Even Tamio, Princess Tamio, even Emiko, which I know is banned, but still Gisela. These cards all start extremely high and then they just plummet. I mean, the last video I made, people are arguing that this set, Amaket, will have $20 to $40 Planeswalkers in it. If it does, it won't last very long. And even if it did last very long, eventually they would come down to these prices when we get a new set, as is tradition. So again, you're not going to see the extremely expensive Liliana. The last hope is $35, but you're not going to see Jace Vin's Prodigy at $80 to $100 a piece for the regular non-foil version. You're not going to see that price ever again. As long as massive pieces exist, standard will be much, much cheaper. So let's talk about some. Let's talk about pre release as well as draft. Pre release is $30 where I'm going to go. I'm not going to disclose where I'm going to go because that's kind of creepy and I don't really want to deal with that. But $30 for from midnight, but normally you get there around 10 because you hang out, play some EDH. From 10 until 8, that is, what is that? Like 10, 12, 10 hours of entertainment for $30. That's $3 an hour. That is insane. Dave and Buster power cards are like $40 a power card if you want to maximize your points. Your, your credits and there's many times I've spent you know an entire day at David Adams bowling and they have pool and that's more expensive than the actual games I feel but I don't know I haven't actually calculated per time but man F&M at less than a dollar an hour you know for air conditioning hopefully air conditioning in Texas what what other hobby comes to less than a dollar an hour for F and M, what other hobby comes less to three dollars an hour, and that does not include for the pre-release stuff that you can win. And for F M N F N M, that does not include the prizes you can win. Right? You can gain or add plus would be a terminology used by younger people. Heart of Kinren and Walking Batista Ballista. So this is the first time we've seen a non-mythic at the over ten dollars but again you can buy an ebay for less than ten dollars so you're not talking i'm not talking about these seven sets in standard being quite expensive if you're opening boxes boxes didn't get cheaper but the singles did the singles that you would play in standard remember masterpieces the large majority of them are not in standard so they don't have any relevance to the price of the format because they are meant for the collectors or they are meant for the people who have more money to invest in magic. I, okay, I take back invest to spend in magic. I don't want to talk about investment anymore for magic. And standard is incredibly affordable for the average person. Um, magic is an affordable hobby. It's got a ton more and I congratulate Wizard of the Coast for achieving that objective. If you are a player, this should be amazing for you. You should enjoy it. You might be like, oh, the format is stale. I'm not going to judge the format. Everyone in my locals play some janky deck. I'm playing allies right now with Draina because I want to play Draina. It's not, I, couldn't even, I couldn't even make a vampire deck. There weren't enough good vampires. So I had to uh, go with the ally, the allies, which is kind of a bad deck. But 
it's going to be okay. The financial ec economy, the economic rationale of the masterpieces, it now makes sense to me. It is a very positive development in my opinion. It is now a player's game. It is now an extremely affordable game. With more masterpieces in every single set, I don't see these prices spiking. You're not going to get very many Sahili Raws. Right? That's a perfect combo deck in terms of, hey, they printed a card that goes perfectly with this card, and then now they can make a combo. Not gonna ha That doesn't happen very often. So overall, I congratulate Wizards of the Coast for doing a good job of keeping uh, prices of standard very low. I don't currently have any like Kaladesh or Aether Revolt cards, but if I wanted to buy a playset of each, wouldn't cost very much money. We're not talking about Jace Vin's Prodigies. We're not talking about Lilies when they were in standard. Uh, if you're really curious at what's actually happening in rotation, take a look at the Magic Origin prices. They have It has one of the lowest expected values for any box. But when it was in standard, you had Hangerback Walker at rare. You had the... Pain lands, which were considerably good because the Eldrazi actually wanted to play them in modern and in standard when they were together. And then you had your Lilies for the Aristocrats, you had your Nissa, which was always very good, and you had your Jace, your $80 to $100 Jace. Take a look at the current prices of those cards and they will astound you because they astounded me. I didn't realize they were so low and the expected value of a box was. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but take a look at it. It's interesting. Anyway, that's it, guys. Leave me a comment below if you agree, you disagree, if you like a cheap standard, if you don't like a cheap standard. I don't know who won it, want one. Everyone's happy. The collectors get cool masterpieces. The standard players get much cheaper cards. Wizard Coach sells more product. I don't know if that last part is correct, but I assume it is. And everyone's happy. I, I think I congratulate Wizard of Coast for doing a good job here. Anyway, that's it, guys. Bye.